Kay here for a discussion on fermentation. First, let's discuss when fermentation happens. Fermentation happens after glycolysis. So if you haven't watched the glycolysis video yet, go back and watch the glycolysis video because glycolysis happens first. Uh, fermentation only happens when an electron transport chain, remember we're using ETC to abbreviate electron transport chain. So it happens when an electron transport chain is unavailable, okay, or um, for some reason our terminal electron acceptor is not currently available. For, ex for example, if we have no oxygen. Um, so fermentation happens when our ETC or our electron transport chain is unavailable. Um, what happens during fermentation is that our NADH is oxidized, so it's losing electrons, um, and we're turning it back into NAD, okay, in order to enable glycolysis to keep functioning. So basically we're recycling our NADH and turning it back into NAD so glycolysis can keep going on and on and on. Um, this uh, process right here is going to require pyruvate to be reduced into some other compound. So we're going to change our pyruvate into something else. And we call this compound that we're changing pyruvate into a waste product. Now there's many types of fermentations. There's hundreds of fermentation pathways. Um, and we're going to only look at two. We're going to look at ethanol fermentation and the lactic acid fermentation. First, let's take a look at ethanol fermentation. So this is happening when um, somebody's making alcohol, for example, in brewing beer or wine. Um, so <clears throat> again, we're starting with glycolysis. We're breaking our glucose down to two pyruvate molecules. Um, and remember, when we're breaking down our glucose during glycolysis, we're changing two ADPs and we're adding a phosphate to them. Remember, P sub I represents our um, phosphates. So we're adding two phosphates to two ADPs, therefore we're making two ATP in the process of glycolysis. As, as you'll notice, we're not making ATP in our process of fermentation down here. All we're doing is we're recycling um, the NADs the NADHs, sorry, the NADHs are our byproduct of glycolysis and if we don't have any free NADs, we can't undergo glycolysis. So in our fermentation we're going to recycle those NADs. Um, so we're taking the two NADHs and we're going to be removing the hydrogen ions or hydrogen atoms and turning them back into two NADs. In that process we're taking our two pyruvates and we're, we are removing um, a single carbon compound. We're removing carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide is this C bonded to an O and double bonded to another O, bonded to two oxygen. So we're going to remove this portion of our pyruvate and we're going to turn it into um, a two carbon, two carbon compound, um, acid aldehyde. So we're taking our two pyruvates, removing a, a carbon dioxide, and we're left with two acid aldehydes. Um, then we take those two acid aldehydes through ethanol fermentation and um, we further rearrange the compounds and we change those acid aldehydes into ethanols. And you'll notice that we have this um, hydroxyl group, the OH, that is a signal that we have, we're talking about alcohol right here. So um, basically in uh, our ethanol fermentation we're taking pyruvate, remember pyruvate has three carbons, one, two, three, um, and we're converting it to ethanol. So first we had to change it to acid aldehyde, but then we change it to ethanol. And we also make a molecule of carbon dioxide. So for each pyruvate, we make one, one molecule of carbon dioxide and one molecule of ethanol. But since um, the product of glycolysis is two pyruvates, um, when we do ethanol fermentation, we make two acid aldehydes and change them to two ethanols. And as a result, um, we recycle two NAD, two NAD molecules as well. So an example organism that does this is yeast. So yeast do ethanol fermentation, and they're necessary in order to make things like beer and wine. Our next example is very similar. It's called lactic acid fermentation. Again, we're starting with glucose, going through glycolysis, and changing or breaking our uh, six-carbon glucose into two three-carbon pyruvates. See, one, two, three carbons. So this is our pyruvate right here. Um, remember in glycolysis we're making two ATPs. In, in this process of lactic acid fermentation, again we're recycling our NADs. Okay? We're, we're losing our electrons, our hydrogens from the NADHs, and we're recycling back to NADs. Um, so we take our pyruvates from glycolysis, and instead of rearranging them twice like we did in ethanol fermentation, we only rearrange it once. Okay? We're not making any carbon dioxide, we're not losing any carbon as a waste product like carbon dioxide gas. So we're taking our pyruvate and we're converting it to um, two lactate. So for each pyruvate we get one lactate, but since we get two uh, pyruvates from our glycolysis, we take our two pyruvates to make 
two lactates right here. So our pyruvate, which is a three carbon molecule, is converted to lactate, which also has three carbons. So we're not losing anything as carbon dioxide here. So no carbon dioxide gas is produced. And um, some example organisms that do this are muscle cells in all mammals. So muscle cells in all mammals can do lactic acid fermentation. If, you, if you've ever um, done some stren strenuous exercise or run like the mile run um, in school, and then your muscles burn afterwards, that's because your muscles were doing lactic acid fermentation. Now for a final overview of fermentation. So in fermentation, our inputs from glycolysis, um, or our products of glycolysis, were two pyruvates and two NADHs. So we're going to take that pyruvate and change it to something else. And while we're doing that, we're able to um, lose this final, um, this hydrogen off this NADH and recycle it back into two NADs. Um, so we, our output are two NADs. And then we also have various carbon waste products. So whatever we turn the pyruvate into is our carbon waste product. Um, so the goal of fermentation is to recycle NAD, H, back into NAD. If you remember that um, losing electrons means oxidize. So we're oxidizing NAD, H, back into NAD so that glycolysis can, heat, uh, so glycolysis can keep going.